Hi, I'm Stephen with AlbertaUrbanGarden.ca. Last year, I started a citizen science project to evaluate two different garden products, biochar and rock dust. The intent of these trials was to put the product claims to the test. This is the first video in a three-part series that will summarize the second year of this project and the results that we've found throughout the growing season in 2015. If you'd like more information, I'll post a playlist on the trials at the end of this video. Although these products may perform different in other situations, they are being marketed to home gardeners. And if you're a home gardener like I am, I take great care in making sure that my garden soil is as good as it possibly can be. So I decided to set up the trials to see how these products do in a home garden situation. A poorer soil trial was set up this year. However, due to high temperatures and drought conditions, the trial section failed to provide meaningful results. In order to fill the raised beds in my home garden, I started with exactly the same soil mixture. I resorted to purchasing products in order to have greater control over their content. I took three equally sized garden beds and filled them with the exact same initial soil mixture by volume. The beds were constructed so that each of them receives the same amount of sunlight and they're isolated from each other. I took care to make sure when purchasing the products that I filled each of the raised beds with either equal parts from the same bag or that I had purchased multiples from the same batch numbers. This ensured that I started with a consistent soil content and volume. In order to determine which of these beds became the rock dust test bed, the control, and the biochar, I asked the YouTube community. One of my long-term viewers selected them at random so that I could avoid any personal bias. This bed became the rock dust, control in the center, and biochar at the top. A variety of crops were selected to allow us to see how each product performed across a number of crops. This will help us understand generally how the product performs regardless of the crop selected. It helps eliminate any bias caused by a single species. This year, I planted tomatoes, peppers, carrots, and beets, as they represent some of the more popular choices for a backyard garden. I started the growing season by planting the exact same thing in the exact same locations in each bed. I then took great care to treat them exactly the same for things like watering. By ensuring that we started with the same size of garden bed, soil content, and sun exposure, we ensure that any differences noted throughout the course of the growing season are as a result of the products being tested. Throughout the growing season, I harvested and weighed the produce coming off of each bed. I recorded the weight in grams and pooled the numbers at the end of the season. So, we come to today's question. Do biochar and rock dust increase your garden's production? Last year's results were even across the board, and all three trial beds performed similarly with yields differing no more than 5%. This year's control bed produced 5,829 grams, while the biochar produced 5,296.5 grams. That's a difference of about 9.2%. This is slightly more than what I would consider equal. The biochar bed did produce less than the control. The rock dust bed only produced 3,053 grams of produce. This is quite interesting, as it represents a 47.7% lower yield in the rock dust bed when compared to the control. This is a massive drop in production. Last year, we concluded that rock dust and biochar did not have a positive effect on crop production, but also did not have a negative one. It would appear this year's conclusion, though, is that biochar and rock dust have had a negative impact on the total amount of produce produced in these garden beds. These are very interesting results, however, they only represent a part of the picture. On the next segment in this result series, I'm going to take a look at the soil from the beginning of the season and the end of the season to see if there are any differences in the pH and nutrient availability. In the third segment of this year's results, I will take a look at a variety of plant tissues to see if any of the products have impacted the nutrient density of the produce. Thank you very much for joining me today. I appreciate it very much, and I hope you have a fantastic day.